this is where I spend the majority of my waking hours. No, but I think a lot of you would be surprised to know just how many hours I spend here. place in my house, a place that I haven't recorded before, and it's uh, pretty personal for me. <laughs> so if you haven't been here to my channel before and this is your very first time seeing me or knowing me, my name's Britt. Welcome and hello, welcome to my channel. And what I mostly talk about on here is personal development and spiritual expansion. So today I'm going to be sharing a lot about this space right here. <laughs> I feel like I get a lot of questions about this on Instagram. If you don't currently follow me on Instagram and you want to kind of connect with me on a deeper level, you can check me out there. And I kind of get a lot of DMs about the place that I practice in, what a spiritual space or an altar is comprised of. Before we head into the video, I kind of just want to touch on that because this is why I've been avoiding creating a video like this for months and months and months is because it is just so personal. Everything about spiritual practice is so individual and can look completely, completely different from person to person. And I just really want to state that and honor that <laughs> because I feel like a lot of times now, um, in our culture, we can kind of just see what other people are doing and sometimes we see the way that they're so taken with it and we kind of want to gravitate toward that so that we can see if we can experience it um, for ourselves. And I really just want to uh, express having patience with this practice and really getting curious and finding something that works for you. I've had this altar space set up in my bedroom for maybe like eight or 10 months whenever we kind of changed our furniture around and I was like, oh my gosh, everything kind of fell together. I had had these items already for such a long time that I just wasn't really using. I had an altar space in my sunroom that I was using a lot last year. And then I was just like, you know, I run, I want to bring this into my bedroom. <laughs> so this is where I spend the majority of my waking hours. No, but I think a lot of you would be surprised to know just how many hours I spend here. I think a really special part of my life and what I attribute a lot of my personal growth to is um, having a space that I approach to do a lot of my really deep internal work, a lot of my self-reflection, a lot of my intention setting and fear releasing and just like kind of therapy sessions with myself. <laughs> so if this sounds interesting to you at all or like maybe a practice that you're curious about or just want some insight on to see other people's practices and how they connect with themselves, please by all means keep watching. So altar spaces or spiritual practice spaces, what are they used for? Like I mentioned earlier, they can be used for a multitude of things. Really, I'm only going to be explaining what I utilize my spiritual practice space for. <laughs> As you can see, I'm kind of like, man, how do I how do I do this? How do I take this video? So first things first, um, I have all of my spiritual practice tools on this altar and they rotate all the time depending on what I'm into, what crystals I'm working with, what practices are really feeding me. To first get started, I want to just really honor this space and the way that I honor this space is by lighting a candle and the significance of Lighting a candle is just that I am calling myself present. What that means is that I am choosing to approach this space to do work with myself. I'm not going to allow myself to wander off or to start getting started doing other stuff or get on my cell phone. This is really just a way to say yes, I am approaching this space to do specific work. And the work can vary all the time. There are no rules about any of this stuff, which is 
the biggest reason why it resonates with me so much. So after I light my candle of presents, I like to cleanse my space. I cleanse my space with a lot of different things. It depends on the energies that I'm trying to call in. Clear, there are four main incenses, smudge cleansing tools that I use. This one is called sweet grass. You can see it's just a braided grass. <laughs> It smells absolutely divine, almost like a spicy like cinnamon, and that's what I'm going to be smudging with today. I also use sage. This is um, more of a masculine incense. It brings in the masculine energy. It's got a very, very strong smell. And then I have Palisanto. This one is the bark of a tree, the Palisanto tree. Maybe some of you have smelled it. It smells really, really good, more of a feminine scent. So the sage is for masculinity when I want to call that in or just kind of cleanse my house. Palo Santo is really great to cleanse the house whenever brand new people are coming over, kind of just preparing the space for new energies. The sweet grass is the ultimate for feminine energy, so that's what I'm going to bring in right now. And um, for the integrity of this practice, I'm going to go ahead and go around my entire house the way that I normally do whenever I'm not filming for YouTube. <laughs> I think this is a really fun part of my practice too, is just bringing in the natural elements to a lot of my practices. I am someone that is constantly strengthening my bond between the natural elements of the earth. <laughs> And fire is definitely one of those elements that I really value um, connecting with. So even just standing here and watching the flame until it goes out, and then with the intention of the presence of my candle, I'm going to smudge my house. And while I'm going around smudging, I can be doing a variety of things. I can be repeating a mantra, stating my intention for the time that I'm seated at my altar. Really, all these things are completely dependent upon the individual and exactly what you're feeling in that moment. And then as I return back to my spot where I started, kind of just closing the circle of intention with three clockwise circles. Sitting at my altar space is a really great way that I am able to connect with my higher self, connect with my own internal guidance system and my spirit guides, guardians, and the ascended master teachers that I do work with. So this is the space that I kind of call myself present to and I just open up that channel to be able to gain access to all of this infinite knowledge. And that might sound super woo-woo, but I know that probably a lot of you understand what I mean. That place that is within each and every one of us that knows the answer to everything. And whenever we get really, really still and quiet and undistracted, we can think of whatever question that we have in the world and we can hear a little whisper of an answer as to what will work for us or a next direction to take or something more to think about. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So what makes up an altar space? This is an absolutely limitless question, but there are some key components that I think are really, really helpful to have in any altar space. That candle that I mentioned, influential symbolism or portraits or photos, ascended masters, teachers, deities, gods, goddesses, items that you utilize in ritual, the card decks that I utilize, flower or gem essences, plant medicine, the crystals that I'm currently working with or that are a staple in my practice. I even have a photo here of an energy that I embodied at my first year at Spirit Weavers that I always like to keep on my altar to remind myself just what I can be, just what I can embody and gazing upon this tin photograph that was taken at my first year at Spirit Weavers which was a really life changing um, experience for me is incredibly inspirational. This symbolizes so much to me. <laughs> this is why it's so personal from person to person. I want to talk about this doll too because I don't want anyone thinking that it is something that it's not. This is a little doll that I got for my niece and I've just been kind of letting it sit on my altar space to soak up the good energy. I want it to be a really magical item that I give to her. Um, she's an Aquarius sun and she loves playing make-believe. She sees little beings all the time and she has an incredibly 
active imagination <laughs> and I just really am excited to give this little kitty to her. <laughs> I got this for her in Oregon when I went to Spirit Weavers this last year. I also have a candle that my husband and I made the night before we got married which we use this um, for all kinds of different reasons, but we will light this only whenever we are either working through a problem, whenever we're making love. We utilize this in our wedding ceremony as well. This was the candle that we lit in unity together, and I love having this little piece on my altar as well. A lot of times I'll kind of just sit here and write in my journal as well. Um, as you can see, I write a hell of a lot. <laughs> I've had this one since uh, it was after I got married. Yeah, March 5th was the first time that I wrote in this and I'm already almost done. So less than six months it's been and I have filled out the majority of this. I write a lot. I write a lot. Any kind of self-reflective stuff like I bring my journal everywhere with me. So this is a really great practice. A lot of people really benefit from the self-reflection of journaling. I think it can be overlooked a lot, but really it's whatever you make it. Really, if it doesn't feel magical to you, if it doesn't feel like it's helpful to you to write down the thoughts that are inside of your mind, maybe that's not the perfect outlet for you to release the stuff that you think about all the time. But it's very helpful for me and I love doing it. And I highly advocate journaling for anyone who is looking to um, come into greater knowing of who they are on a deeper level. I work with a lot of different card decks as well. I have three tarot decks that are on here and depending on the um, types of messaging that I'm looking for, I'll choose different decks. This one is the Smith Rider Waite. This is the Wild Unknown, which deals a lot with nature and animal energies. I have this smaller Rider Waite deck. That was given to me by my first tarot teacher and um, this one didn't resonate with me very much so I'm letting my husband not I'm letting my husband I gave it to my husband and that's his tarot deck and then this is Dorian Virtue's healing with the angels deck I also work with flower and gem essences I really just wanted to share some of the little mementos that make up my individual altar that I sit at every day pretty much and um, I guess just really talk about the stigma that some people can have around spiritual spaces or altar spaces or just thinking that they're inherently um, evil or not good or against a certain religion really they're whatever you make it for me it's just a space that I can come to and sit at and um, come into that knowing space within myself that I know that I am a limitless being I can find out anything about myself that I want to know it's really really interesting whenever you can come to know yourself on a way deeper level and then you can um, start to decipher the things that are working for you in your life and the things that aren't working for you you can go back into your mind space and see whenever those things started popping up for you and then you can start unprogramming those things and replacing them with more favorable positive helpful programs <laughs> I've got my rose water for just little spritzes. I bring this everywhere with me. You can see it's like almost done. I hope this was helpful for you. And if you have any questions about an altar space or a spiritual practice space, or if you want to share a photo of your spiritual practice space with us, please, please leave it in the comment section down below. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please make sure to so you don't miss any of my upcoming stuff. Make sure to turn that little bell on so that you get a notification whenever I do upload. And thank you so much. I really hope this was entertaining for you or informative or inspirational. Have a really great day and I love you so much. I'll see you in my next video. Namaste.